play on the first five minutes of Warband. And Find us a nice topic to talk about. I'm gonna take you over the WNL fixtures and we're gonna talk about them because I know you like doing that. So do I. <laughs> yeah, you're, it's true. You do like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, let's take a look. Defenders of Bonwoki against Irish Rebel. Uh, I'm, I'm actually going to give back to Bonwoki. I think if they put it work in, they've got some really good players. And uh, Horace is back, that's big. Oh yes, he is indeed, yeah, that's true. I think I think they can do it. I, I think that we considered an upset actually, but I think they can do it, yeah. You? Um, I, I voted for Irish Rebels because they've been fighting some hard teams um, from the start of the they're league more, off. What? Yeah, they're more of a, they're probably the favourite. Yeah, they're a very consistent team, but uh, I, I think if, if, uh, as you said, like with Horace coming back and if Umluki invests the time and, and sharpens their teamwork up, then uh, they could do it, yeah. they got some great individual players, haven't they? Yeah, but so does IR though. Like I, I, I feel, uh, and, and that's obviously no disrespect to any of the teams, that uh, the general level, like skill level of, of the, the average player in IR is higher, but uh, when Wookiee has more toppers, more people with actual, like, like a sh shitload of, of potential. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. I think maybe that, maybe that Jitney feeling, they're generally better, maybe that's just because of the better teamwork they have. Well, yeah, you know, if, if they get, like, good teamwork, then they can even it out so well, you know. Yeah, I mean, they've got players, like, world-class players. I mean, what, the Anthony's still absolute class. I think Horace has got the potential to be an absolute beast. Well, he already is. Yeah, he is, yeah. We're going on next, uh... Oh, well, I got couch, which allows me to go immediately to the next setup. Let's take a look. I'm gonna pick another one. Right, here's a good one. I had a discussion with some IG members. Um, Legends versus IG. Like my first instant would be to give that to IG because they've been such a long-standing on a high-level playing clan. But then again, Legend did beat Warhammer 18-2. Of course, it was the default win because they ran away after eight rounds. But Peter did join Legend, so I don't know. Um, I think... One second, let me kill these people. Oh, he's done me. Get kick slashed, man. Get kick slashed. That's like Xeon. I'm fighting. Ooh, I got that. He was hiding around the corner, the sneaky prick. Oh. Legend uh, IG. Legend IG. I think. Hmm, it's actually quite difficult on that. Um, actually, when Legend play well, they have a genuinely good team. Like genuinely a good team out. Even without Peter, they had quite a good team sometimes. Like if they played all their best players and they were playing well. With Peter as well, I mean, I think personally Peter's arguably the best player in the world. I th and he, he's got the he's good enough to actually just single-handedly wreck teams. I can't I can't see how they can stop him. To be honest, they haven't got I don't think they got enough world-class players who are putting the time in currently to be able to stand up to him. So I actually think Legend might win it just because. I think Peter might seem randomly destroy him. Yeah, that's we, we, I sort of heard. Um, that's sort of what happened in the Warhammer match. You know, he was he's just so good. But, oh well. Um, SRC versus SOE. Saracens versus Sons of Emperor. I'm gonna give that one to SOE. Yeah, I'm agree with you. I think I think I actually think Saracens are in, not in a great place at the moment. I think they're struggling to get all their best players all the time. I think they might be maybe not putting as much work in as they need to be. And don't get me wrong, I actually think SOE, maybe even on, on paper, they're sim quite similarly matched. But I think the way of playing is a bit smarter from SOE. They've they got their own way of playing and they do it well. I think yeah. it should be very close though. I reckon it'll be 9 7 either way. Oh, well, yeah. I think I'm going to go with another 10 6 at the SOE. Okay, um, Vikings of Niflheim against Wolfpack.
Um, uh, Wolf Pack's mild plan, of course. Uh, I think they're a good team. They're one of these teams that put a fair amount of work in, and they'll stick together. But I think they're probably just a bit outmanned here. So I'm going to have to give that to Nifflemon. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I think that that's going to come down to sort of um, bigger infantry balls, and, and that one I would give it to Vikings in time. Yeah. They are a good team, though. They've got some players, Wolf Pack, and they fight well as a team. One of the few teams, I think, that still actually does like the old school trainings, you know, where you go and meet yeah. up on the server and practice different things. That guy almost got it. Um, KHR versus ORP, already had that one. Um, Heroes versus Finn, that's a good one too, in my opinion. It, it, well, once again, it's when two turns up for Finn, but I'm going to say... Heroes to go out, I think. Oh, I'm gonna shoot you. I'm going to die. Damn it. Okay, I'm gonna save the best for last, obviously. Oh, oh. Um, I'm gonna take another look. Um, here's a good one. Um, what are, what's there? Samurai versus... Um, Duke Zembre, I think that's the name. Um, that is quite a good one. I I don't know who's playing for Samurai anymore. Like whether they start losing players. Do you know? Uh, no, I, I wouldn't actually know. Uh. Well, after that, I'll give it to Samurai. <laughs> they just shout at me. I'd probably say Debris. I think. Probably. Mm -hmm. As you said, I think it depends on the team that Samurai um, gets out. I was surprised by who did the breeze lose to recently. I'll check that too, because you know I can check they lost, stuff. But he they lost really heavily there, if I remember correctly. Um, like much heavier than I would have thought. Was that uh, week week seven? That is, yeah. I believe so. Yeah. Let's take a look. Um, they lost. Oh, to Irish Rebels. That does not surprise me, though. It doesn't surprise me that the scoreline was what was it? The scoreline was quite a big defeat, I think. Oh, I'm happy. Happy. To, let's go uh, seven it. Uh, shield skin? Sure, mate. So here comes the big question, man. Who do you think is going to win? AU or RNGD? I'll always to win. <laughs> Not going to comment? <laughs> There's no point playing this if you don't think you're going to win. I think we're ready, but I think we're in a better place than we were. It's impossible to stay sharp if you just constantly win. I think the loss would have done us good, and I think actually we're playing a lot better now than we were before it. I would agree with you. That's all there is to say, folks. Um, why would your Finn are fighting heroes? <laughs> I hate that when you go for a hole and, and you, you, the guy releases a shield, so you hit him and it's a bounce. Need <laughs> some help on top, Frank. I'll come back up now. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping down. Okay, run back down the stairs on me. The fucking there's tons of geezers up there with arch. There's only two of them. I killed the first one. No, get front. He's quite good, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, he's. Sonic is looking good. Who, who are they fighting? Let me take a look. Sonic is fighting. A uh, Warband. Ooh, that, that's going to be I a tough one, too. I think Warband challenged them, but I think that was quite yeah. brave. Yeah. I don't get wrong, Warband. They both got some really good players. Very old clans, I think. Both. Well, Sonic's not an old clan. Players, Warband is an old clan, though. Yeah, Warband is an old clan, yeah. And the players, they've got bags of experience between them, the two teams, don't they? Should be a good match, I think. I'm actually looking forward to seeing how Kalakwani will do in the league, because they used to be one of the top, 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 top teams, and, and it's just fun to see them coming back, and, and I, I'm really like rooting for them, because I want them to do really good. I, I, yeah, I've got a lot of time with Kalakwani in class. Yeah, they're nice guys. Really, yeah, they're nice guys, they've got a lot of really, really great players, haven't they? And they put a lot of work, too. It's, it's nice yeah, to see. Yeah. 
I think they will do well in the end. I think it will take them a bit to get up to speed. They got a few players who are coming back, and some of them haven't played for ages. You see, they added White Strike, the front of yeah. their team, which gave back to their roast team. So yeah, I think they'll do well, but I think they'll need a bit of time. I don't know if they've ended a bit too late, considering the time needed for challenge to the challenge to the top. But. I'm gonna put this on YouTube, man. State of the game, Warband style. Now, another subject though, because you know you, you do know a lot of stuff about the game. Um, I was streaming, I think, a day or a day or two ago, and you, you said something about to um, King John, KB King John, that the current meta game is really, really aggressive. Yeah, I think I don't really know. I don't understand why, to be honest, because I don't think it's necessarily always been extremely effective. Sorry, where is he now? Um, he's in a uh, rap market. <laughs> yeah, he's. Oh, fuck, he's... oh shit. <laughs> I don't necessarily know why it happened, but it seems to have come Get me shield, get me shield, get me shield, sorry, sorry, get me shield. Thanks, love you. I'm gonna wrap it up. Put down the phone with it. Oh, nice. Thank you. Yeah, so the camera again, very aggressive. Yeah, everyone's just going all out attack, aren't they? I think there's a lot of cliches from. I think that conversation mainly came about because if you see in a lot of North American tournament spreads, some of the arguments against using EU rules is the fact that they think we all camp. You want to look at the new WNL season and tell me we all camp? It's a joke. Like, it's hyper aggressive for me. I actually think it's sometimes stupidly aggressive. I don't think it works necessarily all the time, but it's been proven to be very effective. I think. What it does give you is a... It's a bit like a cheese in Starcraft. I think you don't necessarily have to be playing on top form if, if you're playing with these kind of ultra-attacking, infantry-heavy tactics. You don't have to necessarily be playing extremely well because it just it's a gamble. Uh, that's what I uh, what I like would surprise me in the final match against our match against RGD, which we lost. Um, it was 8-7, um, so we could have got a draw, and they came out all infantry on us. And I'm, I'm like, I'm not gonna say they were playing bad, but it so surprised us. I remember being in that team speak, and it was such a, well, it just came at us, you know. It was like, oh my god, they're all here, they're all in three. What are we gonna do? Yeah, I think, and I didn't think. I think in terms of the way we were playing, we were quite confused at that period. That too. It, it was still a big surprise, though. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why we're surprised. I mean, all, loads of teams have been in that sort of thing for ages now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just team hit that guy. Me? Yeah. No, I didn't. <laughs> Did I actually? You're a mean bastard. <laughs> one, one nasty little bastard, yeah. <laughs> no, I think... We were taking like confused setups as well. I actually, think. Well, yeah. I, I think actually the problem generally was like I don't necessarily think it. I mean, it is probably possible, but it's very hard to stay at the top of one's game if you're just constantly winning by kind of. Uh, well, winning. yeah, but anyway, the current meta game. Because we had a nice interview about our Andre D match with Lust. And, uh, <laughs> the current meta game, though, like I saw Andre D and, and Saracens play uber defensive on uh, the other guy come to me. Wow. Uh, play oh, uber defensive. What? No, no. no. Still, you know, it's pretty scary. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking game, mate. <laughs> you always say it's scary. Shut up. <laughs> well, anyway, but th like, did you see the the Saracens vs Orange D um, stream? I I oh, did okay. I did the stream there with Azan and Deacon. Yeah, I did. I I weren't there unfortunately to watch the actual match live, but I have actually gone back and watched it. And well, yeah. yeah, I mean that just kind of sums it up. But it also sums up why it necessarily doesn't always work as well, doesn't it? But don't you see, like, like Saracen's playing so ultra defensive, man. They like just forfeited half of Vendetta. Yeah, I think you can. Yeah, I don't know why. I, that was just. I think that was just a bad decision, to be honest. Do you think more teams I, will start doing that? No, it didn't work, did they? I mean, meta game usually evolves around things work. What, uh, people watch how other people do it and are, and are successful. 
So they're going to watch that and they're going to think, well, that's not successful. But I don't, I don't think. To be honest, it's not necessarily defensive. Like their positioning is not too great on it. Yeah, yeah. But, I agree. If you look, we're quite defensive defending Mandela, aren't we? Really? Well, no. It, it sort of plays out like village, don't you think? Uh, yeah. You take positions, see where the enemy comes, and then you engage him. Exactly. But that's defensive, isn't it? You use the brilliant positions that the map gives you. And I, I think they were defensive, but they weren't necessarily using the positions very effectively. Yeah, I agree. There's a couple of guys on right, though. Don't let yourself be surprised. There's a fucking loads of them. You wanna tuck back in? Yeah, I'm gonna tuck back in. Honestly, though, I think it, it, it's good to see that after all these years, the meta game is, is still evolving like this drastically. It's, it's, it, it's it, it, shocked me. It, was, it really was a shock to me when it started happening. Well, I didn't think it would catch on, but it has. Uh, yeah, but you're right. It's a, it's a positive thing for Warband in general. It's exciting. Games are much more exciting. Yeah. Well, also, I think, I think there's going to be a counter movement, though, because that, that's what we're seeing uh, the stretch from RNG uh, that we also do on. Oh, uh, well, there's a guy. Oh, no. I'm going around the back, by the way. Okay. Right. Nice. The you. threat you see on, on uh, Vendetta is, is like uh, on attacking side can be super defensive, expecting the enemy team to come out. So, And with all the, well, as you said, sort of the cheeses entering the meta game now, it's it's uh, it, it gets like, it's a new tactical level, you know? Uh, that's what I said after our match with RGD as well. There comes Scavenger to take care of the archer. Like, now teams not only have to prepare for the strats of, their, of the enemies, but also for any possible all-ins sort of they can do. And that makes it a lot more fun. Well, I didn't see that happening. Uh, Lost, what you're saying right now is that um, the, 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 I think that the forced rules do allow for more aggressive tactics. Kick! Because I'm boss! Uh, but, um, can I just shoot Skimmy? But I, I don't think it forces people to have less archers. Like, the, the, the fact that people go four infantry, four cav, and drop four packs of javis for each infantry. Well, one pack of javis for each, each infantry. I think that's really two, the 3 3 2 is still not very viable. Yeah, no, I think it's more viable. I think, to put it like this, I think Uni Renegades Union last year, you saw you, Renegades were already using this ultra infantry attacking style. You saw it again against IG in the yeah. third place playoff. Like, this isn't a new thing. They were. I remember in the match before Calaquendi and 3OA match, they had a training with us on Phil by the River. And I think they just literally ran at us with like, a huge group of infantry. And that's the kind of thing that Union was so good at punishing because of the way they fought. Like, it was extremely tight ears and really yeah. effective. And that's why they lost that game. Because they were running in in big balls. And it looks like you can get into the Union and it looks like you can reach them, but you can't. And you yeah. keep running, and you keep. You, once they pick off one or two infantry, they're infantry. That's the go. reason why we lost the Union in, in Last of as well. They were playing so good, like getting their archers going in, or infantry going in there, baiting a little bit, like kiting, uh, and, and then just the archers shooting us, man. Uh, it's just yeah, it's like a, a direct counter to sort of these heavy infantry. I'm going to reply to what Lust is saying in, in, the, in the chat right now, and that is that, um, that there's less time for early round shooting. I do agree with that because there's less round time, but if there's six infantry or four infantry and a couple of cav, if you can get your archers, three, two archers into a good position, then you can just drain down hell on those guys. So I don't it's think, I don't think like the, the, the round time makes for less archer play. Uh, I, I think what it does make for less is, uh, you remember on Nordtown you'd have that about two minutes where archers would shoot each That's other. That's true. I don't, but I didn't, uh, that wasn't ever good anyway. I, I didn't like my archers doing that, it's too much of a gamble. Like there's always, even a great archer like you could arguably lose to someone like, I don't know, Red Warrior, just randomly. Like it can happen to anyone. Saying so Red Warrior is a bad archer. <laughs> he's not a better archer, he's less well rounded, but he's as good a shot at least, if not slightly better yeah, shot. I, I agree. I'd have you above it because you've got better like, game sense. Nah, I, was... I just. I think it's going to allow for more diverse setups because now basically people go the same thing that works over and over again and you just fight it out but like with more cheeses, more like all-in styles. Uh, like I wouldn't, I'm, I think that we can perhaps even see an all cap style coming out on some open map as the first round, you know? I think, oh, um, yeah, I, that's possible. It's, there's a, all caps got a few problems, but I, I think that's something you'll see. I, I'm just always surprised when people are 3-0 down, they don't bust it out, even on, um, 
even on a closed map. match. I don't yeah. see why not. I don't. If you're losing three 0 and the un un enemy team is just absolutely tonked, why not? You all have Couch Lanson's best form straight away. Risk it. Like it's very, if you are three 0 down and against the team that like gets really tonked and you're like say Sweden, so you can't really do much. I don't see why, I mean Lost always points out people should mix it up a bit, but I feel often when they mix it up, they uh, maybe change one card for one card, I don't think that's going to make a blind bit of difference, often. I think you either need to, you need to completely change what you're doing, you need to upset the balance more. Well, um, <laughs> I think that can make a crazy amount of difference, uh, like, let's say you have two cards, yeah? You have two cards, two archers, four inf, and your, your opponent is, is just sort of, you know, crushing you, and he has like, say, two cav as well. If you get one cav, let's say we saw that in, I think, the under D match as well. They had a uh, um, Ottoman with a, a, a course on heavy lands, and that's sort of an e D anti cav build, isn't it, for cav? And uh, thank you, mate. Can you drop your shield, please? Um, I thought Robo had a shield for you. Yeah, but oh, well, noobs, noobs. Like I, I think I think one small uh, change can make a difference because if you can like sort of shut down the play which makes your opponent's team so strong just for a little bit and then you manage to take out the rest of the team and that's it too I think. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. I do think I don't know. As you said, we'll see us this meta game shift eventually after when people find effective ways to fight it. I think that's already there though. Like as you said, RNGD were doing it that early, and I think that's why they lost the Union because you wouldn't play so so kitey, so so defensive. And I think that's the counter. Uh, you know, it's bad mobile we'll pickup. I think that's yeah. that's the counter to uh, to playing that aggressive. You know. But you think you have to play so well? You have to be playing extremely well to so have to pull that off. Do you reckon many teams are playing that well at the moment? I, I think that's sort of the same thing with uh, with Starcraft. I was playing it this morning, and I'm I'm not a good player. I'm like. I'm silver, gold, liquid. I'm I'm super bad at it, and and uh, and you know I I got cheese super hard, you know, and and I just died it because I don't know how to defend it. But I think the top teams will manage it. Like you know, if you see a two racks incoming, you can do something against it if you're on time. So if you see an all-in sort of happening, then you can react to it. I think. Like, like yeah, that's what I think. I wonder if people will have the mentality at the moment, like when they're playing all these heavy infantry build. They give you a certain way of playing the game. Like it, it takes a huge, like, change in outlook of the game to be able to shift towards different, completely different style of playing. I'm not sure many teams are capable of it. To be completely honest. There we go. Fuck, Catherine's sick. You're on point. You're sick. I oh, know. I know. Playing together with Heiser. Can we go, mate? Fuck, I should just stick with you a bit more now, right? Too strong. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, well, it's 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 just I, it's the best game in the world, so I I I do think it's it's quite nice. Uh, to see still changing that much, you know. Yeah, I and would. I'm gonna react to Lost again. He's saying that Warband is different to Starcraft in the way that you can change your setup mid round, though. Yeah, that's true. But a Warband round only lasts four minutes, and then you can change it. So that's well, you, you still are very flexible. Also, because um, I know I see what he means, but I think I don't know. Say you, uh, you most teams, the average open map build is capable of countering a heavy infantry build. Yep. It's the way of playing, and I think you can change your way of playing in the mid round if you, if you can read the game correctly. I agree with that. I think that's like the, what still is the basic of this game, like to a lot of even new players, is the combat, you know? Everyone, even be it a cav, uh, an archer, or an infantry, is capable of beating someone in melee, and that's what makes this game so fun. Like in the way if you do shield skimmy drops, uh, shield skimmy by the way. Where, where are you? Like, let, let's say they push you, your archers can perfectly take out their shield and sword and start fighting, so that's, that's really nice. Yeah, they don't often don't know, do they? No, but that's a call you have to make, isn't it? Yeah, I think, yeah, but often when you're playing, it's like when... When you're playing as an archer, 
you have an archer mentality, you want to shoot shit. Like, even if you're told to go in with the infantry, I think often you end up just... Kind of I don't think it's that. I think people are, at this point, only skilled, most of people are only skilled in one thing. Like, I'm, I consider myself a good archer, but I, I'm, I'm not really that good of an infantry. I can hold my own. No, 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 but I mean, and I, I know that I'm, if you like tell me, you know, I need help, come in my lead, and I'll come, but, but I think a lot of archers just... They play archer only, and they they don't feel comfortable in melee, and that's why they don't fight in melee. That would be yeah, my guess. No, I guess so. I mean, there isn't that many all rounders about, is there? Really? Oh. I think Turkey's got some great all rounders, doesn't it? Yeah. But also, one thing, like uh, up on this point, if you're around about die, if you're like a, a sort of a hybrid, let's pull back here. If you're sort of like a hybrid, oh, there's enemy behind us. If, if you're a hybrid, you, you can't invest all the time you, you perhaps want or, or need in every single class. Because, you know, uh, uh, like at this point, nobody's capable of playing this game. The time required to do all that. That's my guess. Uh, I'm going to put on a different song as well, because I can hear it shut down. What are we listening to? Um, young Bloodhawk. We are young. It's a good song, man. Oh, I spec this shit. I'm gonna do some one, one sec, one sec, one sec. I'm gonna spec you in a minute. All right, I'm specking you. I'm specking you. Where are you? Yeah, I'm. Do it, mate. Clutch blocks. Clutch blocks. Ah. Oh yeah, last, uh, last is saying that it does help to play different classes now and then. I do agree with that. Like, like you know, uh, if you know Sora's program, like I'm, uh, me and Clark are both mentors there, and I always tell like you know, if you wanna learn how to shoot infantry and and calf, just go play it, so you know how to move and stuff. And, it, it helps, of course, with insights. But I don't play any other classes. I'm shit at all other classes. So I think it can help to play other classes. But if you've got somebody who's a dedicated infantry, a lot of them are very good. And there's not that many left anymore. Really dedicated infantry. I mean, if you look at people, maybe like Ace Gear, he's someone who, to be honest, when he's not around on IG, there's really not that many other dedicated infantry left around. That's and true. Actually, often the dedicated infantry are extremely good at like, their job. Like, I think so. Like, I'm on crap, everything else. Really am dreadful. And um, Rix will verify that. What? I would, what? Sorry, what? But I'm dreadful at all other classes. Yeah, you are. You're, you're, well, it's, it's amazing that you're this, that good at infantry, because, you know. <laughs> This bloke. It's, it's funny, isn't it? I'm gonna steal him from you. Told you! <laughs> Fucking rat! <Yeah. sighs> Don't you. This is mine. I'm standing in front of him, right? Cab's coming, no! Great! <laughs> oh my! Oh, you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Bad team it there. And then Desmond comes along and smacks me. And <laughs> Desmond? <laughs> no, what a fucking crap. Oh. Desmond, mate, what are you doing? You're killing me here. But, um, yeah. So. Of the three classes, Archer, Infantry and, uh, and Cav, which one do you say is the most important in the current battles, the current matches? Uh, well, I think Cav often gets the most kills, doesn't it? I think probably I have to say Cavalry is the most important. Obviously, I don't think you can actually have a functioning team without having decent people in all classes, but Cav's the most important, I'd say. I agree. Mm. I do feel that a lot of people I can underestimate the value and the input that 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 um oh my. The, the value and the input um that uh, that infantry can have though. Like I know we had that issue uh, like for a couple of weeks and it's obviously luckily it's solved now because we're gonna fight Anjali. But uh, I felt as an archer I couldn't do that much you know, in our last matches because infantry was always being so aggressive and I think that's the mistake a lot of people made uh, in in the way that. 
yeah, you know, Archer and Cavalry are super important, but if the infantry is not the backbone of, of, of a team, then, you know, without infantry, there's not that much left. That's how I feel. You, you, it, it, does, it anchors the team, doesn't it? Yeah, even it does. Even on open maps where you use two infantry, it's still the, like the anchor of the team. It's where it's the go-to place. It's where stuff happens really often. It's like built on where the infantry is, is where the rest of the team kind of supports, even on open maps. So I think you're right there. As I said, every class is unbelievably important. Like, you cannot have a functioning team without all classes. But Cav is probably the most important. Yeah. I think. But and then again, get Cav relies on other people to get kills, unless it's Cav dueling. That's the synergy between the three classes that makes this game a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. I, st I mean, it's just there's so many infinite kind of variations and different places you can go, different okay. things you can do, different ways of playing. I mean, there's 8v8 players, there's, there's so many different things and so many variables yeah. to take into account. It makes it such an unpredictable game as well. I'm having a jolly good time here. Oh, are you? on you. Yeah, no. Go back with it, go back with it. More. Should we stick with our team? Maybe. Nah, let's go around as a little two-man hit score. Oh, I'm not really paying that much attention to the game. No, I'm not. It's interesting to talk about it. That's, uh... Considering I'm dropping for two people, can I give you, like... You can give me a shit shield, mate. I don't care. Actually, I think I'm gonna go infantry with you. It would be more useful. Oh, it's last round. Don't worry about it. It's difficult, one of the, I think, the difficulties and one of the reasons infantry often feels so hard done by on public play is often when you're playing on your own, it is just impossible. Like, if you're playing on your own as infantry, there's just no point, because as soon as you find someone, they either run away or there's just a big gang of them and you get absolutely crapped on. Yeah. I, I, I do think that um, with restrictions in IG, teamwork has become a bit more important. Yeah. Maybe. Like, teamwork in a way that you can't go off solo and expect to kill a shitload of people. No, that's true. I think one of the issues still is, though, is like, I don't know, if you've got an archer, as many archers as you can have in a team, and they're all good, which is easily possible now, considering the quality of loads of archers around. Because what? It's still a fucking nightmare. Yeah, yeah. They just don't fucking miss, loads of players. They just don't ever miss. Can I have a shield, or? Oh, sorry, I respond. Can I get a sword? <laughs> of course you can. We go outside. Yeah, why not? Let's make a shout out in the team chat. Alright, give me one sec. Give me one sec, yeah. Oh, don't kick me, you know. Here we go. You're a knight, Farson. Yeah, it's... What would you say is your favorite map in, in Warband? Um... I, just, I have to say Sandy's. It's so simple. I just... I, I really like Sandy's bush. I actually... Actually, to be honest, at the moment, because I've regained my composure on open maps, I'm really enjoying playing any open map at the moment. I think playing infantry on an open map takes a different sort of brain to playing. You're fighting right now. Loads of people get in my way though. Yeah, team hit some more, bro. <laughs> yeah, I will. They annoy me. So, I'm in main gate. Can I get a bit of help here? Yeah, if you run back through it. Where are you? Oh, main gate? Yeah, main gate inside. Why is Gotho kicking people's corpses? I don't know, there's a shitload of people kicking corpses. I saw Yona kicking a corpse over there, I was like, what? Yeah, what? No, he's not an IG, he's probably gonna get on it like a double on it, innit? Yeah. 
Mm, damn right. When you have you see a noob running at you like this, <laughs> it kills me with red. Like, <laughs> you think even if they're on the team, you're just gonna smack you. Ah, that was. Oh, there we go. Was he French on the floor? I don't know. Yeah, I thought he was throwing it at me. It's like, oh, it's far as it's not being pretty me. It's, it's, it's fucking. Direct X7, I can't see it, can I? <laughs> well, go on, Direct X9 then. Look at that, you see that kick, mate? It's so strong. I don't know yet, fucking hell. <laughs> get it, get it, get it. Where was he? I think he's over here. I think it, yeah. Jump down. Come on, small sword. Yeah. <laughs> On your back, so that's all you can get. So you can't see the own jabs you throw. <laughs> <laughs> How does I that make you feel? <laughs> I keep giving jabs to Vartan and I actually just kept picking them up. <laughs> do you think, I mean, do you reckon we're seeing more throwing weapons than we did in previous versions of the WNL? They've, they've been really popular for ages, haven't they? They're so fucking good, man. Well, yeah. I, I think we'll perhaps see an influx uh, of uh, Javis. Uh, you know, with the heavy infantry strats, we might see it more. Uh, oh, yeah, actually, the thing that I'm very interested at I'll, uh, is, is perhaps um, better drops from teams. Uh, it'll be interesting to watch how teams come up with more drops. But last more twin weapons, I think they're already pretty, you know, pretty much out there. Most people have Javis or or Jarrett. Some. some people are getting so good to win them as well, aren't they? Yeah. But like, I think stuff like drawing axes and stuff, you won't see. See, they're quite popular in the NA team. I guess that's the extra money. You know, I guess you can afford. I, I guess, yeah. Just can't throw them for shit. Maybe it's because I'm not used to it. Well, I don't know how much different they are, and I never do stuff. We should. So, do you reckon because. Sorry? Because you, you use a bow, do you reckon you'd be any good at. I could at uh, what? Sorry? Because you're good at using a bow, do you reckon you'd be any good at using throwing weapons at all, or does that not. Um, uh, no. Like, because the difference between uh, like a crossbow or a bow and, and, and you know, throwing weapons uh, is, is the accuracy. And that's one thing I'm, I'm noticing really hard uh, because that's 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 something uh, I'll get to that in a minute. But you can do so much, so many shots with a with a bow. It's it's pretty pretty ridiculous. <coughs> and with a crossbow, it's of course. My but I think at this point, although it's not really my habit, I do prefer um, bows over crossbows. I've always been sort of a crossbow guy, but these the bows, the speed and, and stuff. It's, it's and and that's because you know the shooting over shield stuff has become so. You know, f five months ago, I used to be like, "Oh my God, that guy shoots over yeah. my shield!" But right now, you know, it's quite common now, isn't it? Yeah, and 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 that that makes bows a lot stronger right now because you can fight like you can see an infantry fighting, and your enemy has to have his shield up. But you can still shoot in his arm probably, and and that's that, that's so strong because you can do it so fast. You don't really need the super high damage steel. Fucking rat bag! I hate you. <laughs> Little you upgrade. Do you want a Nord War Sword? No, I got a nice axe. You want the axe? <coughs> yeah. This has been an interesting stream, so... Thank you, Claire. Is it usually boring, is it? No, but uh, no don't used to talk about the game that much. Just play Warband. Hmm? I won't tune in then if it's always boring. Shut up. No, it's been pleasure. No, oh, fuck yeah. off. You, you, no, no.
fucking hell I suck. So how do you feel about like drops, steam drops? You think they'll they'll they're going to improve or? Probably, I, no, no definitely. Yeah, they, I think they already have actually. Even heroes, you never really need to do any swaps. They're doing swaps. I think you see loads more swaps from nearly everyone. To be honest, I think we're already seeing it. Yeah. I see some more teams with the, the crossbow drop as well, and which one crossbow drops a, a I think it's a, it's a crossbow for a free sword, which is just like a win-win drop. It's I think it's, it's bizarre. It took us like this long to find out all these drops. Wouldn't you say? I guess so. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of different things to consider though. And think about drops like team composition and stuff like that. Yeah, that's true. Doing this guy with the keys at our spawn. Yeah, I think the drops is already happening. Like whether you'll see people innovate drops, I'm not so sure. People tend to just use ones we've seen other people use. I think there's some. I think what I think one for one drops that are quite well explored, but I think what we'll see more of is big kind of team drops first round, which give you ridiculous equipment yeah. for the first round. I think we can see some more of that. I think that's where it can still improve. I also think still actually people make a lot of errors when dropping. Don't they? Too many really. Yeah, they, do. Like, they fuck it up, they need restarts, they take too long doing it, people take too long to spawn so they're not used to the equipment. There's too many errors like that still made, which I think that'll get ironed out. I'm surprised we haven't seen more use of the Nairacotive mod, which lets you preset your builds. But that will only be useful for one round, because it saves the equipment you bought the last round, so... Give it on a map, on a map like Stanley's Bush, that's really important. I guess it is. How often, people often just get like couched at the start or maybe they can't get into the right position. You could even take the graveyard from the other spawn, I think, if everyone was using it. There's so many different ways you can use it. I think people ironing out their swaps and their build and stuff, that's something that will really improve. As time goes on, I think everyone is improving generally. I try left push out. Too cool. I'm going to drop down and kill them. There's a lot of archers. I'm going to push through, but I'm going to need some support. Would you? Oh, oh I got the archer! Oh, Look at me going dinner! Oh, Almost walked into that. You dead? I oh, almost walked into a jab, but then like Matrix and... How the fuck are you not dead? You walked into like 30 people. You know how good I am. <laughs> Where did they go? Don't you jump. See ya, Lusty. Fucking speed. Wanks. Here's something I wanted to talk to you about. It's a, a shame that Lust just left, but um, how do you feel about sponsorship and partnership uh, with sponsors in, in the Warband competitive scene? Yeah, it's all good. I think uh, if, if you read the thread that was dedicated to it, I think some of the comments made by uh, Greed from Wolfpack, I think they made a lot of sense. But also, I think that's only a positive thing. I'd, like, I'd love to see it, personally. I think it'd be really good for the game. I agree. I think the thread did cover a lot of excellent points though. Do you think it's realistic though? It's worth a read. Do you Maybe think not we'll see in, in the near future any sort of sponsoring from for any team? Yeah, I think for a team in particular or competitions as well? Uh, well, comp well, tournaments, players, teams, whichever, streams, I don't know. I think definitely tournaments is likely. Yeah. With, with prizes or two or simply sponsoring? I think prizes. I think something that's less likely in the distant light soon is teams. I'd like to see it happen, but I don't know if there's a big enough market for it to be viable for the companies at the moment, but I guess we'll see. I think Bannerlord could help that a lot, 